I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. It is so fun to be at another all-church worship, all-church lunch, and all-church bowling party day. Give it up. And I figure if you can't wear a red feather boa to church on Chiefs Go to the Super Bowl Sunday, when can you, right? We worship because we are followers of Christ and it sets the rhythm of our life. We come together week in and week out to lift up our praises and to lay down our burdens because it sets the rhythm of our lives. Welcome to worship, friends. If you are new to us, we are so pleased that you are here. Thank you for being with us. Um, We have a tear-off connections uh, in our bulletin, which is the side sheet that tears off. If you are a guest or visiting, we would love and appreciate if you would put down a little contact information for us so we could follow up to say thank you so much for joining us for worship. You can put those in the wooden uh, offering boxes that are by each door on tables right here. The connections tear-off is a place to put your presence, also your prayers. If you have a prayer request, you can write it down there, and any participation that you might want to signal you're willing to engage in. So I'll be sharing about that in just one moment. Next week, we will be adding back into our elements of worship the element of offering. So in the 9 o'clock service, we will be passing the plates once again. In the 11 o'clock service, we will have the plates up here on pedestals during the reflection time. Just wanted to let you know about that as a way that we begin to think about and focus on what are the ways and means that we are giving back to God for all that God has poured upon us. Offering, coming to a sanctuary near you next Sunday morning. Not that it's ever been gone, we're just putting it back into as an element of worship. Also, our our fantastic chow team has been downstairs making a delicious all-church lunch for us. And thank you. Yeah, let's give it up for Dave and the team. Thank you, Dave. Dave wanted everyone to know there is plenty of food. So come on down and just sit and sup together. Jesus had a table he called us to. And we've got some tables downstairs that we may be called to. Come today and fellowship and have conversation with others in um, the Christ community. Lent is coming, Ash Wednesday is February, Wednesday the 22nd. I think I got that number right. Yeah, I got a number right, it's so good. I celebrate every time I get a number right. Um, And for Lent, we will be doing an all church study called Unsettling Lent, uh, a devotion, a daily devotion. We are inviting again, like we did during Advent, for all small groups in the church or individuals to participate in this study. Um, and there is a place on your connection sheet to indicate that you would be willing to do that. Um, The books are $5 a piece, and we are also going to do something new. We are asking for four to six families or households to host a weekly Lent study group um, so that we might gather some new small groups in home and then ask each of those small groups if they would invite someone along with them, a coworker, a neighbor, Uh, a family member as a way to um, offer the community some spiritual nourishment and also give them a taste of what life in Jesus is like and what a taste of our church is like. So we're hoping to um, draw some new folks in. Please let us know if you might be willing to be a household hosting a six-week study of Unsettling Lent. You can also indicate that on here. Last, this is a Uh, announcement for all of you ladies. We will be relaunching the annual ecumenical women's retreat that Michelle Moon began um, about 12 years ago after a hiatus due to COVID. Um, Our theme this year is God Breaks In. God's always breaking in. It's so great to see it. Um, The retreat will be Saturday, March the 4th, first Saturday of March from 8.30 till 1 o'clock. And We will have two keynote speakers as well as great coffee and creamer, several different leaders leading in different prayer methods, and then we're going to end with a lovely lunch together before we launch back out to share all the goodness that our cups have been filled with. God Breaks In, Saturday, March the 4th. If you're interested in more information, also mark that on the connection sheet. If you mark anything on here, please put your name and the best way to contact you about these opportunities. 
grace and peace to you in Christ Jesus. May it touch your heart and may your soul rise up this morning. Amen. I invite the acolytes to come forward with the light of Christ. Would you all rise? Just remain standing since we're going to do the call to worship. I have a confession. I got here early. I was going to learn a song. And then I was downstairs talking with one of our most amazing, awesome youth. And I have no idea how to sing the song we're going to sing. But, <laughs> but uh, Larry here is going to play it through so we can hear it. This, uh, if you, uh, if you are we, on hymn, you, blah, blah, blah. Nine Methodist hymn number 771. Um, and then we will follow, uh, follow along with our call to worship. And so we'll sing it, we'll talk through our call, we'll, we'll, we'll respond for our call to worship, and then we'll sing it again. Is that right? All right, we're good to go. Your steadfast love, O oh Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like mighty mountains, your judgment is like great deep. O oh Lord, you is the end of the day. 
O God, how precious is your steadfast love. All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light do we see light. amazingly blessed aren't we we just God continues to bless us and fulfill us with the gifts around us I don't know why I'm seeing so much red today I know why I'm not gonna say a word last time I was told I jinxed the chief so I am gonna just stand here and say God is incredibly good and he gifts us with what he knows that we need amen as we come into our prayer time this morning I uh, um, remind you that there is a time of reflection where we come forward uh, to kneel at the altar, to light a candle, to receive a prayer shawl. There's the opportunity 
uh, to be prayed over. Uh, this is a time for us to reflect on all the good that God is doing in our lives and to reflect on where we need um, God to really be interacting with us. And so this morning I just ask that you um, just let God lead you. And if you're holding a sweet baby in your arms, just let that be where God is leading you right now. There's babies in the house today. And we are blessed by that. And so we come to God in this time of just giving ourselves to him. To say, you are God and I need you. So whatever you need in your day right now, whatever you need in your life, body, mind, and spirit, might this be a time that we can lift it up to God and then lay it at the feet of our Savior Jesus. Will you bow with me, please? Gracious Lord, we're here this morning on this cold Sunday, a day of worship. We just had to be here to meet you because we knew that you had already been here warming this place for us by your Spirit. And so we now acknowledge you and your presence by Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, by presence as creator, redeemer, and sustainer of all that we need. Lord, we give you thanks. Through the songs that we hear today, the songs that we sing, the lyrics that speak to our hearts, and your word may become living in us as we understand, we know the living word that comes from you. Embold us in these days, Lord, to be faithful to you, to honor you, to live our lives according to the ways you have called us, as you continue to call us together faithfully to us, Lord. You are so faithful and you are so good. And we strive, Lord, to be faithful too. Sometimes we need reminders. Well, you're good, Lord, at reminding us tapping us in our spirits to awaken us to you. So we come to you this morning, Lord, with freshness in our souls, with our hearts ready to sing your praises. We thank you for the gifts, the bounty of gifts, and we thank you that you are the God of forgiveness who teaches us to be forgiving in return. That you are the true God of true gods of faithfulness, and you teach us to be faithful. So we come to you, Lord, with those things on our hearts. We seek pardon and rescue from you. Well, we need to hear from you, Lord. And we need you to say into our spirits, it is truly well, because of how great you are. We're grateful today, Lord, for the family of fellowship coming together in this community, that we are united as one in fellowship, that we come not only to worship, but to be together in conversation and to dine at the tables and to rekindle relationship. Spark that inside of us, Lord, that we are able to give to you all that you give to us. Great is thy faithfulness unto you. We're grateful, Lord, that you call us to this place where we can let our gifts and our talents shine in all the ways that we serve this church, your church, nestled right here at the corner of First and Main in this beautiful community of Maryville. You have called each and one of us all. And we call you by name, Lord and Savior, Jesus, Messiah, the eternal gift for each and every one of us, that you have set us free from our sin life. We receive that pardon, and we say yes, Lord, yes to you. Show us the ways that we can praise you so that we know that forgiveness will bring a peace into our people that builds up the faithfulness and return to your love and your steadfast faithfulness to us. Bless those who are searching for healing and for answers, for those that are seeking repair in a time of loss. 
Stand near to the brokenhearted and mend us, we pray. Bless this world you created as we repent and return to you. And help us to remember to be grateful to all those who offer themselves as a gift to you through prayer and presence, gifts and witness and service to your kingdom and thy will be done. As we pray the prayer together that Jesus taught his disciples, we say together as one, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Joe Franks, when you, when you hear a song like that, what is it you say? Amen. Hoo ah! Yeah, that's what I was, like, I was waiting for that at the end of that song. I was like, get a little taste of our, our second service. Ah, oh, there it is. Hey, today I have the honor, I have the honor of reading from Lamentations. Lamentations. It is one of my favorite books. It's a poem. And you might be like, you read that book, you'd be like, there is something wrong with Chris. If he thinks Lamentations is one of his favorite books. Um, but it's that the poetry in Lamentations, it comes after the fall of Israel. Context is important. We read, we're saying the context. And it's after the fall of, of Jerusalem and Israel, and it's a people who are in mourning, and they are hurting. And so it's a book for anybody who's in this place where I feel like I'm in the dark. I feel lost. I feel hurt. I 
feel like I don't know what comes next. My friends, this is the book that says you're not alone. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, and therefore I will wait for him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you please join me as we stand and sing, this hymn is a continuation of that verse. to take. I don't know if you've seen it, but we're going to look at it together right now because as we have been through worship so far today, we know that the presence of God has been here, that God is so faithful and God has never left us and God stands beside us when we're on those high mountaintops of celebrating and when we're in the, the valleys and the dark times of our life, lives, there is the light of God that shines so brightly. And maybe you're finding just kind of an ebb and a flow of several seasons that come and go. And there might be the time in your life when you felt like you've doubted God's faithfulness. I mean, 
That's simply to be honest, right? It's a hard life that we live. And thank goodness we have the gift of God that we can lean into and love into because of the love that God has for us. So maybe you'll think back to a time when you doubted God's faithfulness, but in that ebb and that flow, and the love of God, the grace and the mercy of God, we have the ability to list out the ways that God continues. And since that time, has proven his faithfulness to you, to us. Even when we go through seasons of the church, we feel that we need to lean into this true faithfulness of God. And I, I want you to carry that with you today as we think about our faithful God. Our God is faithful. Will you just say that in your spirits just for a moment? I have a love-hate relationship with yoga, but one thing yoga has taught me is to breathe, right? And sometimes we just need to breathe and breathe in the thoughts of knowing the, the faithfulness of God. God's faithfulness is powerful, and it's one of the attributes that God has that flows uh, from God into us and outside of us. All these attributes of God, that God is infinite, that God never changes, that he's self-sufficient, he has no needs, and he pours into us because we, as humans, we know that we have needs. Our God is loving and our God is glorious. Our God is holy and our God is good. Pastor Kim's favorite thing to say, God is good. And all the time, a good friend of mine got me a little pink hat with some bling on it that says, God is good. I must remember that, that God is truly good, that God is merciful right along with his goodness. He is merciful and he is gracious, our amazing God. He's all-knowing, he's all-powerful, and God is just. I don't think we think about God's justness enough. Deuteronomy 32.4 says, The rock, his work is perfect. For all his ways are just, a God of faithfulness, and without injustice, righteous and upright is he. What does it mean that God is just? It means more than God is just simply fair. <laughs> it means that God always does right and always does what God says he's going to do, and he always does what he says he's going to do for all. Likewise, although it is hard for many of us to accept that God is always just, he's there for us. When we seek forgiveness, when we seek pardon, he's there with a just statement, just for us. And God is wise, an attribute that we wish we had sometimes. This is where we can begin to live into the faithfulness of God, living out the attributes to say, well, God is wise. And in his wisdom, God says that I can have that wisdom too, right? So we seek that wisdom. And God is faithful. All of these incredible attributes of God, the extent of God's faithfulness for us. It's a part of God's essence, and it affects everything that God says and everything that God does. God is faithful in assuring our salvation. Friends, he's done that for each and every one of us. God is faithful to be continually available for communicating with us through the power of prayer. God is faithful in forgiving our sins, and he's faithful to his promises. I don't know about you, but when you read the Old Testament, and sometimes you get stuck in the poetry of Lamentations, and you're revived, you find that God is truly faithful to his promises to us. Oh, the promises that come from the ancient word of God. That he never changes, he's real for us today, and the promises, those things that we seek in our heart, in his will, he is going to be there for us. There is indeed encouragement in God's faithfulness, and maybe you need to know this today. 
That God will not only be faithful in assuring our salvation, providing for our victory, forgiving our sins, and sustaining us through suffering, but he will be available to the needs of our hearts, our bodies, our minds, our souls, our spirits. And as our friend Chris preached a little bit in Lamentations, this poetry that is so incredibly beautiful, the author of Lamentations, uh, the, most people say that it is Jeremiah. You know, Jeremiah was a prophet that God called him and told him to do some pretty strange things. And after all of that, that that Jeremiah wrote, he lamented for God's people. But he always found the hope right in the middle of it. And if we back up in this Lamentations chapter 3, just a few verses beginning in 19, I want you to, I want you to hear these words of this poem from, from Jeremiah. He says, I remember my affliction and my wandering. Raise your hand if you have been in that place, right? Sometimes we remember it too well. We remember that affliction, that wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Boy, that's pretty gloomy, Jeremiah. What lament is this? And then right here in verse 21, right before we get to the meat of the text that we read this morning, verse 21, Jeremiah writes, Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. <laughs> what is that speaking to you, to you today, man? We're not going to be eaten up by the world, right? Can I get an amen on that? The world is not going to consume us and eat us up because we have this victory in Christ. Reminds me of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, where Paul writes, We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body. We know the depth of it. We know the death of Jesus Christ so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. The faithfulness of God is all about the revelation of Jesus Christ in us and through us that others may come to know that faithfulness is there for them too. Because of God's faithfulness, we are survivors. Because of God's faithfulness, we have victory. Because of God's faithfulness, in times of weakness, we can and we will find strength. As Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, that is why for Christ's sake I delight in weaknesses and insults and hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, when I am at my lowest, friends, that is when I find the goodness and the faithfulness of God who helps me to be strong. The faithfulness of God, no matter what we're going through, who helps us to find that strength to live into the mercies that are new each and every morning. Because of God's faithfulness in times of weakness, we will find strength. Because of God's faithfulness, as Brother James says in James chapter 1, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kind. Don't you love the way these authors write? We want to get to the hope, right? We want to rush to the hope, but we know there's this life that we live that tends to put us in more valleys sometimes than on mountaintops. And we have to know that in those valleys, the light is still shining. And because of all that God does for us, we can have perseverance through it all. James 1 verse 7 says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from God, the Father of heavenly lights, with whom there is no change or shifting shadow. So what does this tell us about God? All these attributes, all this talk about his faithfulness? Simply stated, the Lord is going to provide. The Lord does not change. And the Lord reveals himself to us, Jehovah Jireh, 
the God who sees us, the God who provides. Do you know that God sees you? Sometimes we just need to feel seen, right? Sometimes we just need to know the expectant nature of God is the God who sees us and rises us out of the dark and into the light so our little light will shine, right? This little light of mine. Yeah, doesn't that just fire you up? I believe that God provides, and I believe that God did this in Christ for each and every one of us. And I also believe that God provided for Thomas O. Chisholm. Well, who is that? If you look in your hymnal, he's the poet of this beautiful song, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Thomas Chisholm was a Methodist minister. That's why we like this song so much, right? He wrote 1,200 sacred poems. Some 900 of them were published in Christian publications. He wrote the song, Living for Jesus. I don't know if you guys know that one, the poetry of that. Living for Jesus, a life that is true. Striving to please him in all that I do. Yielding allegiance, glad-hearted and free. This is the blessing pathway of blessing for me, living for Jesus. This song has as the main structure this idea from Lamentations chapter 3. Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. What does this tell us? God is not shifting. God is not changing. In Christ Jesus, God remains the same. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He never changes, and that is true faithfulness. Thou changes not. Thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. We don't speak that way, but I love it when we sing it in poetry. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. We have a God who made a way for us, a God who loves us so much in his faithfulness. He made a clear pathway that faithfulness becomes a part of who we are. Our life in Christ is all about faith and the believing and what we believe in. No matter what's going on, verse 2, summer and winter, springtime and harvest, Right now, we're in the bleak midwinter, right? Waking up again to a little snow on the ground just when you thought you had your driveway clear. Mother Nature dropped some snow. And your faithfulness woke you up to either drive through the snow on your driveway, blow it off, shovel it off, and find your way here to worship this morning. God's faithfulness through your faith ignites your faith to be faithful. To him. Don't ask me to say that again. I probably couldn't. It's the faithfulness of God that we remain in that fa- summer and winter, springtime and harvest, all seasons, that God is at work, sun, moon, and stars, and their courses above. The creation of God is even in this song. Joined with all nature in manifold witness. I don't think that has anything to do with a car. I don't even know what a manifold is. But I did look up the word just so that we knew. Manifold, an adjective, many and varied, of many kinds, having many features or forms. Man, that's what God does. He's made us all in his likeness, but all different with the gifts that we have to live out the faithfulness of God. Look at us all, looking similar but not. Having incredible gifts. You invite me up to play the bells. It's going to take me six weeks to play the song you all played this morning. The gifts that continue being brought into our worship. The gifts that continue to be brought into our ministries. The gifts that continue to be brought into our community. Because we are a community of believers in the faithfulness of what God is doing and these promises that's so real. Manifold witness. The diverse ways that God shows himself within our nature to enlighten our journey that even the rocks will cry out because God has the power of all creation to call out his name. The final verse brings it home to us, the idea of our salvation, pardon and sin. Forgiveness from sin, friend, opens up the doors to a peace that sometimes we can't understand. 
the depth that we need for this eternal hope and this eternal peace that is brought to us through a God who was so faithful that he sent his one and only son, Jesus the Christ, to the cross that we might recognize our need for forgiveness, for salvation, and to live out true faithfulness to God. God is faithful, and he calls us to be faithful. He calls us to be faithful in servanthood, in stewardship, in love, mercy, and grace. God, who is faithful in manifold witness, made us all different in varying ways to be the same in the ways we speak and testify to his goodness and his glory, but able to do different things with the gifts that he has given us, our spiritual gifts. And God has called us here to this place. And it's mindful to me of several years back before I got here, this church was walking a very faithful, incredible path. Uh, was introduced to, you guys remember HCI? You guys know what that stands for? Healthy Church Initiative? Things that get us faithfully started and going. And through this uh, faith, faithful, healthy church fin initiative, uh, the now Bishop Robert Farr, who was not bishop at the time, came and led us in a beautiful and healthy way and, and showed us where we might have, as a church, had some weaknesses and where our gifts were that we might have some strengths and gave us some prescriptions that we might move forward as the body, that we might grow together in the grace of God and our spiritual lives. And all of our Sunday school classrooms filled and fellowship galore, the Healthy Church Initiative, is the process designed to transform churches. The focus is on providing resources and strategies to church pastors, staff, laity, and congregations. Guess what? Nobody gets left out of the healthiness of the church. Because we're all here together, faithfully serving the God of our salvation. And so coming from that, I don't know if you all remember the um, five prescriptions that we were given, right? That created a vision. Up there is this vision that I think the, this church, FUMC, has been carrying with it probably for about 10 years now. The idea that we are connecting people at life's crossroads to God's love and grace that's not just something for this church. This is something for all believers, all who fellowship together, all who strive in an ecumenical setting to lift up the goodness of God by inviting and growing and reaching out. Our faithfulness played in to the vision and the mission of the church allows spiritual growth to kind of explode in us. And that's why we're here at this point as Wendy announced that we're, we're inviting us to an all-church Lenten study expanding to the community and all community Lenten study about unsettling Lent because sometimes we make it too simple to have that self-sacrifice that we need to build up our faithfulness to God. I don't know how many times I says I'm giving up chocolate because that's easy to do by now. It's easy for 40 days to give up something so simple like chocolate. But really, what do I need to do? Maybe you can ask yourself this. What do I need to be doing in my life? Maybe it is chocolate. <laughs> Maybe it's coffee. Oh, my goodness. See, that, God and I have a lot of conversations about that one, right? Preach it. Coffee. coffee. Yeah, you got it. But God calls us into a faithful life serving him out of his great faithfulness to us that we might be allowing ourselves to empty out those things we need to empty ourselves from and get back on the pathway to stewardship and celebration of life together. That we're inviting and we're growing and we're reaching out and we're saying, hey, yes, Pastor Kim, I heard Wendy announce, I want to be one of those households, one of those families that hosts just a simple six-week study on unsettling Lent, how Lent needs to be unsettling in our spirits for us to grow in faithfulness. These prescriptions that HCI gave us was a vision, strategic planning um, mission that was aligned 
with all the other things that we needed to fall into place, and, and which were our hospitality team. Oh, man, God blessed us with Liz Burnside's, amen? And we got a gift in her who loved hospitality, who loved reaching out, who created a team of, of greeters and ushers and people who would love on each of us as we came into this place. Vision planning, hospitality, the number third prescription was to grow our children's ministry. And I sometimes think that we're still kind of in this cycle of, of, of things are happening and then they're not, and we need to find volunteers, we need to find help to really boost our children's ministry. We need a whole lot of us raising our hands and saying, yes, I want to love on the children of our church. I want to love on the youth of our church because we can no longer say they are the future of our church. Faithfully, we need to be saying they're the church today, and we, me, <laughs> Every day in confirmation class, I learn something from these beautiful students who can teach us a new way of living our lives that takes us out of the standard mold and to be brave and kind of push, push the edges of the box that we sometimes put ourselves in. Vision planning, hospitality, children's ministry, lay leadership development, developing leaders in the church. Knowing the gifts and the skills that are right here in this sanctuary builds the future of this church tomorrow healthy and sound. And the fifth prescription was the building. <laughs> Guess what, friends? We did that, and we did it well, and we paid off the note, and now we celebrate beautiful things in our gathering space. I see every Sunday morning new groups of people just gathering around coffee, getting to know one another. It is amazing how many ministries and small groups and good things we faithfully do in our community. And each and every one of you are a part of it. And if you're visiting us here today, you've been a part of it. Because some of you join some of our small groups and book clubs and come and help on Wednesday night at Chow. Some of you are just learning who we are and we're learning who you are. That we continue to build the kingdom of God. We're not seeing a far off place of when I leave this earth, I'm going to go there. But what does it look like today? Faithfully striving to the faithful God whom we serve. That we might be more inviting. Who have we invited to church? Today you apparently invited a lot of folks, right? Besides just a pastor doing an all call to 200 some phone numbers that we have in a com computer base, but us physically going up to our neighbor, going up to a coworker, going up to someone that we haven't seen, worshiping with us and saying, man, come and see what's going on at first. Come and sit by me in the pew. Come and sing the songs and hear the anthems and the bell choirs and Larry's amazing fingers and Mike's trumpet blast and the praise band getting ready to cause us to dance. This is what it feels like to worship. This is what it feels like to feel the faithfulness of God and say, yes, I want to be faithful to. What do I need to change in my life? What directions do I need to go in order for faithfulness to explode? Because we're doing more inviting and that invitation is helping us to grow and that growing is reaching out to others and everybody's getting a sense of the goodness and the faithfulness of our amazing God. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto thee. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Join us in any part of this next mashup song you know. Clap, dance, sing, whatever the spirit leads. the uh, acolytes to come forward for preparing us to carry the light out to follow that light and to truly know how great our God is 
I love the song. It says, how great is our God? Sing it with me. And that's evangelism, isn't it? I know how great the Lord is. I'm feeling it. Even on days when I don't feel it, I'm feeling it. How great is our God? Sing it with me. Sing it in your life. Sing it in your spirit. Sing it. Because God is calling you to be faithful unto him. As we ready ourselves to leave this space, we will go down to the food space, which is always good. We can go out this way and down the stairs. We can go out this way and down the stairs. The elevator will take us down. So many ways to get down. Simply follow your nose, for it knows. I'd like to offer a blessing over the meal that we are about to share so that as you go down, you can just start right in to the fellowshipping and the dining together. Gracious Lord, thank you for this opportunity to come together as your family and to worship you and to feel your love, your mercies that are new each and every day. As we sit around the tables together, Lord, may the conversations from our hearts touch one another and help us to be more inviting and growing and reaching out. Bless the meal that we are about to receive. Let it be nutritious to our bodies as you always are to our souls. We give these moments to you in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. God be with you till we meet again. By thy counsels, God uphold you. With thy sheep securely fold you. God be with you till we meet again. Good morning. Good morning. Stay for stay for lunch. Yes. Yes. yes.